Hello and welcome to the third video in this series on Introduction to Home Assistant. Uh, in the last two videos, we talked about getting started with Home Assistant, uh, and then we talked about integrations, integration types, IoT classes, and how you can add integrations into your Home Assistant. I briefly also talked about entities, uh, such as uh, switches and media players. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking more about entities and how we can control them, how we can make uh, ser service calls um, and do stuff like turn on or off lights or control the volume on media players. Uh, so the first thing I want to uh, understand is uh, using the front end. Uh, so we saw from the first video that some of these devices were auto automatically added. Uh, so some things such as a light, I can turn on and off using the front end. Uh, we also have a family room receiver here with the on and off button. But if I click on the three dots here, it leads me to this generic panel. Uh, where I can where I have a few different options to control it. So for example, I can select the source. Right now it's on TV audio. I can control the volume up and down. I can select the sound mode. Uh, so for example, Dolby Digital, Direct, uh, and so on. Uh, I can also see a history of the different states. Uh, so this has been on since I started this Home Assistant install, and, and so forth. And of course, we can add more in, uh, integrations or more entities onto this panel. So if I click add card, I can simply add the entities uh, and I can, for example, add the COVID sensor that I, I got last time that I added to the Home Assistant. Uh, so it shows me how many uh, coronavirus cases are confirmed within Canada. Now going beyond that, what we're going to want to understand are the developer tools here. So if I click on developer tools, the first tab is states, which gives me a list of all my entities. And for each entity, there's an associated state with it. So for example, the lights in my bedroom, they are currently off and that is their state. I can click on this info button to get a generic uh, menu for the entity and I can turn it on, in which case the state changes to on. Uh, and then for example, the media player, the family room receiver, uh, it's currently on. The sharp TV that I added, that's off. Uh, the person, which is me, is unknown as in I'm not being tracked by Home Assistant at the moment and so on and so forth. Uh, with sensors, the state class is actually a uh, number rather than on or off. Uh, the sun, its state is below the horizon. Now beyond states, we also have state attributes. So different uh, states will have different attributes. So for example, my receiver, uh, the different attributes include source list. So it gives me a list of the different sources that are available to me. Uh, it also tells me the volume level. So right now it's at 58%. Uh, whether the volume is muted, so it's false, as in the volume is not muted, uh, and so on. And for example, the Sharp TV I have, uh, there's less attributes here because it's currently off. But if I turn it on, we can see that we get more state attributes. So we get source list, uh, we get the volume level, uh, whether it's muted, the current source, and so on and so forth. So the states and the state attributes can be used for automations. So I can trigger an automation when the state of a light changes from on to off or from off to on or whether there's a state change. I can also make automations based on state attributes. So I can say things like trigger this um, or, or do this if the volume of my receiver goes above 60%, for example. So that's the entities list and their associated states and attributes. but to be able to control these uh, entities without just the generic menu here, we have to do something called Home Assistant Service Call. So if I click on Services here, it actually gives me a list of different services that are available to me in Home Assistant. Uh, so as an example, let's type in Switch here. So with a Switch type entity, there's three different options I have for service calls. There's Switch Toggle, there's Switch Turn Off, and then there's Switch Turn On. So I can press one of these. Uh, let's say I want to turn on a switch. So I pick an entity. Uh, let's say I want to watch a movie on my Harmony Hub. And I can call the service. Uh, so this was in UI mode. I can also go to YAML mode here, which gives me a YAML code for this service. And I can copy and paste this exact text into an automations configuration file or into uh, a Lovelace uh, configuration file, Lovelace being the front end of Home Assistant. And I can use that there as well. Now there's a list of different services that are available to me here based on the entity type. So there's different ones for uh, switches, 
for scenes, for remotes, uh, for media players, we have stuff like set volume, turn off, toggle, shuffle, etc. But the best way to understand different services available for particular entities is actually to use the uh, documentation for the particular integration. So for example, let's talk about the Logitech Harmony Hub. If I go to the Harmony Hub integrations page, it gives me a list of different services available here. So one of the services is service remote dot turn off, and it tells me what that service does. So this one turns off all devices that were attached. Um, it turns off the Harmony. Uh, there's remote dot turn on, and it gives me the different data points I need. So when I'm turning on my Harmony remote, I'll need to specify the entity ID, which is which particular Harmony or which particular remote. And I also need to specify the activity, uh, such as do, you, do I want to watch a movie or watch TV, etc. There's also a service called remote.send command and with a, a whole bunch of options here. Uh, so again, entity ID, which remote do I want to use? The device, uh, which device do I want to send the command to? What is the actual command I want to send? Uh, and if I want to repeat it a few times, and if I want to delay uh, between seconds. And the service here gives um, a, a few options here. So th these documentations are generally pretty well done uh, and pretty self-explanatory. So as an example, let's try calling one of these services. So let's just use the harmony.change channel service here. Uh, so for this one, we need to specify the entity ID and the channel. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy and paste this exact service uh, YAML. And we're going to change the required uh, configuration options. So we have entity ID here. Our entity, I believe, if we go back to states, type in remote. It's called remote.harmonyhub. So I'm going to copy that here and paste it. And I'm going to change to channel 20. And I click call service, and that should change my Harmony setup uh, to channel 20. So that was Home Assistant Services. In the next video, when I talk about automations and scripts, I'll be coming back to using Home Assistant Services. And that's how we'll be actually triggering uh, different actions within automations or scripts. Uh, but this is how you would call them or test them using the developer tools. Okay, up next is templates. Uh, templates is more of an advanced feature which allows you to uh, write more custom code uh, for automation purposes or for uh, making things happen in Home Assistant. As it is a more advanced feature, I will skip it for now, but maybe I'll make another video in the future on just templates. Uh, and last up, we have events here. Now, events are things that happen in Home Assistant that we can use to trigger automations. Uh, so one of the most common event uh, is listed here is state change. So anytime there's a state change, uh, such as a light turns on to off, that is a Home Assistant event. And that can be used to trigger an automation. Uh, there's also stuff like Home Assistant Start. That's an event. When Home Assistant is started, we can use that to trigger an automation and so on. Uh, now, we can actually use this here to simulate events without them actually happening. So for example, say if I'm doing an automation where my garage door opening causes uh, an alarm to trigger or something along those lines, well, rather than testing it out by actually opening my garage door, I can actually use this panel here to test out that automation. I can also listen to different events that are happening here. So if I click on service register, for example, I subscribe and I click start listening, it'll give me a list of stuff that's happening. Uh, and of course, nothing, no service is being registered, so there's nothing going to be listed here. Uh, but that is developer tools. Uh, so in the next video, I'll be talking more about automations and scripts and how to, in, uh, how to write them, how to configure them, and make them do what you want. So make sure you go check out that video as well.